by the second half of the 19th century, the condemnation of Galileo had come to be seen in messianic terms. The figure of Galileo took on almost an almost divine role in the redemption of mankind from the dogmatism of the past. The great conflict between truth and falsehood had several heroes, and Galileo was among such a pantheon. An important modern source of the notion that the Galileo affair is a central chapter in a long history of warfare between science and religion can be found in the debates in the 19th century over the reception of Darwin's theory of evolution. Increasingly, this metaphor of warfare served as a principle in the modern world's understanding of its own history. The legend of Galileo was important evidence for the purported truth of this interpretation. At the same time, the legend was held captive by this interpretation, so much so that even today, when we know how false the legend is, it remains difficult to reject it. This is particularly true in the United States, where Andrew Dixon White's book, History of the Warfare of Science with Theology in Christendom, published in 1896, enshrined what has come to be a historical orthodoxy difficult to dislodge. White used the example of the, quote, persecution of Galileo by the Inquisition as an ideological tool in his attack on the religious opponents of evolution. Since it was so obvious by the late 19th century that Galileo was right, it was useful to see him as the great champion of science against the forces of dogmatic religion. White's account may sound a bit extreme. Nevertheless, we should be able to recognize an affinity between it and the persisting legend of Galileo. And here's a passage from White's book about Galileo. He writes, Galileo's discoveries had clearly taken the Copernican theory out of the list of hypotheses and had placed it before the world as truth. Against him then the war was long and bitter. The supporters of what was called sound learning declared his discoveries deceptions and his announcements blasphemy. Semi-scientific professors endeavoring to curry favor with the church attacked him with sham science, earnest preachers attacked him with perverted scripture, theologians, inquisitors, congregations of cardinals, and at least two popes dealt with him, and as was supposed, silenced his impious doctrines forever. The whole struggle, White continues, to crush Galileo and to save him would be amusing, were it not fraught with evil. There were intrigues and counter-intrigues, plots and counter-plots, lying and spying, and in the midst, and in the thickest of this seething, squabbling, screaming mass of priests, bishops, archbishops, and cardinals appear two popes, Paul V and Urban VIII. It is most suggestive to see in the crisis of the church, at the tomb of the Prince of the Apostles, on the eve of the greatest errors in church policy the world has known, in all the intrigues and deliberations of these consecrated leaders of the church, no more evidence of the presence of the Holy Spirit than in the caucus of New York politicians. End of the quotation from White. The debate over papal infallibility formally defined at the First Vatican Council in 1870, as well as liberal reaction to the Catholic Church's condemnation of modernism and the politics of the Italian Risorgimento, only reinforced the skewed interpretation of the Galileo affair as a prime example of the hostility of the Catholic Church to reason and science. How, so it was alleged, could the Church proclaim its pontiffs to be infallible when at least two popes affirmed as a matter of faith the false position that the earth didn't move. The legend of Galileo has roots in the Enlightenment and in the culture of positivism, but it achieved renewed currency in the 19th century and cast a shadow of ignorance to this day. There's no evidence that Galileo, when he acceded to the Inquisition's demand in 1633 that he formally renounce the view that the earth moves, muttered under his breath, a pur si muove, 
but still it moves. What continues to move, despite evidence to the contrary, is the legend that Galileo represents science's fighting to free itself from the clutches of blind faith, biblical literalism, and superstition. Galileo and the Inquisition shared common first principles about the nature of scientific truth and the complementarity between science and religion. In the absence of scientific knowledge that the earth moves, Galileo was required to deny that it did. However unwise it was to insist on such a requirement, the Inquisition did not ask Galileo to choose between science and faith.